Welcome to Seoul, South Korea. It's a city of 11 million people and the capital of the world's 12th largest economy. About 30 miles north of here is North Korea, which has an economy that comes in just below the Congo and Mozambique. The reason for that division is uh, another great idea of the United Nations. What I mean is that at the end of World War II, Japan lost, and in part of the aftermath, the UN divided up North and South Korea along the 38th parallel. It was kind of part of the beginning of the Cold War, but it didn't stay cold for long because in 1950, the North invaded the South with help from China. And what followed was, was three years of war, over a million people dead, 36,000 or so of those were Americans. It ended up with a ceasefire right along the 38th parallel again. That just means that the war never really ended. It just sort of stopped. 60 years later, both countries still have large standing militaries. North Korea's got quite a few more troops, while South Korea wins on technology. The tiebreaker is that North Korea has nuclear weapons, not to mention the fact that their president is absolutely crazy. So that's kind of where you come in. America still has almost 30,000 troops stationed here in South Korea. That's almost as many as we have fighting in Afghanistan right now. South Korea is now one of the world's wealthiest economies. Some people might ask why that's really necessary. The thing is, North Korea is not just a threat to its southern neighbor. It's a threat to the whole world. And without us here to keep a lid on that threat, it's that much easier for Kim Jong-un to sell guns and drugs to every country in the world that hates us. Sometimes the cost of not getting involved is greater in the long run than standing in the gap. Americans understand that. But as the world geopolitical environment continues to evolve, and as America continues to run out of money, we've got some difficult choices ahead. I'm Chuck Holton for the Life of Duty Network and Frontlines.